This is part one of my four-part series about the devastation of the Netherlands during World War II. Before the Second World War, the Netherlands was a prosperous state that was undergoing intensive economic growth. Amsterdam as its capital was at the heart of these developments. The country was run by Queen Wilhelmina, who played an active role in its further development. Her daughter Princess Juliana was being prepared to take over as Queen in the coming decade. The harbour facilities in Rotterdam and Amsterdam were further extended in order to fulfil their important role of being and remaining the gateways to Europe as regards international trade. Many wharfs were engaged in building large sea and ocean going ships, not only for the Dutch companies, but also for a large contingent of international companies. One of the most modern ships, the MS Oranje, seen here, served during the war as hospital ship. Dutch ships sailed all the oceans. The Netherlands was and still is a beautiful country, with its great old cities dating from before the Middle Ages, its main waterways, canals and rural agricultural areas. The country has a centuries old culture. Its drawbridges, windmills, clogs, tulip fields were already well known the world over. Many buildings are witness to the Netherlands glorious history. Amsterdam is a jewel in the crown and has always had huge attraction on local and foreign visitors. Not only agriculture, international trade and tourism, but also technology and industrialization have been the pillars on which the Dutch economy resided and still resides. Anthony Fokker was one of the world's aviation pioneers and KLM has taken on an important place in international air travel. From the 1930s onwards, the Dutch railways were one of the first to embrace electrification and were decades ahead compared to countries like Britain where steam trains remained in service until the late 1960s. As early as the 1920s, the Netherlands decided to increase the land surface by regaining the Zuiderzee from the sea with the construction of the Afsluitdijk. Although it brought drastic change to especially the villages surrounding this body of water, the Dutch tradition, including the use of traditional dress, still largely remained. Mm -hmm. 
most of its inhabitants were unaware of the drastic change of life they were about to experience. On the 10th of May 1940, Hitler invaded the Netherlands. Only four days later the Netherlands had to capitulate as a direct result of the bombing of Rotterdam on the 14th of May. Almost the entire old city centre was bombed to the ground. About 800 people died and 80,000 homes were destroyed. Huge numbers of Rotterdammers needed to find residents elsewhere. In parts 2 to 4, far more rare footage and information will be provided about how badly the Netherlands suffered under the German occupation. <laughs>